Welcome to Sunday Reflections with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. The theme of our reflection today is Seeing is not always believing, but believing is seen. At first glance, the story of blind Bartimaeus looks like one ordinary episode of healing by Jesus Christ. But then, as with every miracle Jesus performed, there is more to it than what simply meets the eye. Today, the church calls us to place ourselves in that powerful healing account scenario so that we may learn certain lessons and grow in our faith. Number one, do you recognize the presence of Jesus? Ironically, when the blind man did not have trouble recognizing Jesus as the son of David, the promised Messiah, many who could see clearly with both eyes had trouble believing that this son of a carpenter was the son of God. How many Catholics can see Jesus present, soul and divinity in the Holy Eucharist? Bartimaeus was blind, but deep inside him he could see God present in the person of Jesus. This inner sight eventually brought about his physical sight. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Unless we can see Jesus with the inner eyes of faith, it will be difficult for us to see with our external eyes the great things that he has been doing and he continues to do for us. Bartimaeus cried, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He only heard about Jesus. He only heard about the things that Jesus was doing. And he believed. Because he believed, he recognized Jesus as God. At this point in time, only demons were recognizing Jesus as God. The scribes and the Pharisees, for them, Jesus was just an imposter. Jesus was claiming to be what he is not. But you see, Bartimaeus recognized Jesus. And that was the first step of his healing. As you are gathered in the presence of God today, as you uh, re reflect with me, do you believe that Jesus is still walking on the surface of this earth? Do you see Jesus in the person of the priest? Do you see Jesus on the altar? Do you see Jesus in the Holy Eucharist? If you cannot see Jesus with faith in your heart, then it will be difficult for you to receive the miracles that Jesus has come to bring to us. If Bartimaeus had not called out, Jesus, son of David, perhaps Jesus would have simply walked this way. Mark tells us that Jesus was, Jesus was going somewhere, but Bartimaeus was on the road. If he had kept quiet, Jesus would have walked, in, walked past. And just like Jesus Christ walks past our lives every day, but because we don't recognize him, we don't see Jesus in the poor, in our fellow brothers and sisters, in those in need. That is the reason why we are yet to receive the miracles that we are yet to receive. It's not about running from this church to that church. It's about having the inner eyes of faith. The kind of eyes that Bartimaeus used to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Number two, sin is not always believing. One of the twelve disciples was absent when Jesus appeared after his resurrection. And when he was told that Jesus had risen, he said, Unless I see the, the holes made by the nails and feel his pierced side, I refuse to believe. John chapter 20 verse 24 to 28. For many people today, seeing is believing. 
Now let's assume that after Thomas said those words, something entered his eyes and he became blind. Would he have been able to believe? Many of us are like Thomas. Our faith in God is limited to what we can see. And this explains why there are miracle centers everywhere with huge displays of miracles, most of which are fake. Opening a church has become a lucrative business for many and some employ diabolic means to pull crowds and keep them from living. Even when miracles are displayed, the moral life of our society continues to go down. Signs and wonders, instead of drawing us closer to God, now serve as mere entertainment in our churches. Do not simply limit your faith to what you can see. Because there is always more to what you can see. Be able to recognize God. See that God makes everything possible. Lesson number three. Do not allow anyone to discourage you. Don't, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Whether you like it or not, there are so many people around you that are trying to pull you away from God. They are trying to pull you away from the light. And they want you to live a, 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 a worldly life, an immoral life. They want you to join their cult and secret societies. But don't, don't be discouraged. If you can see God with your eyes of faith, don't listen to what anybody else is saying. Once you believe, if you believe that with God all things are possible and God has put something in your heart to do, go ahead and do it. Do not be discouraged. It is very sad that while Bartimaeus was trying to get Jesus' attention, some people following Jesus told him to keep quiet. They told him to keep quiet. And it was even among the disciples of Christ that they, they were telling Bartimaeus, shh, 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 keep quiet. Don't, don't, don't disturb the master. As Father Amada Suneda also mentioned in, in one of his sermons, he said, sometimes the disciples of Christ are often the greatest obstacles for people to encounter Christ. How do we try to silence? How, how do people try to silence us when we try to call to God? One is by discouraging us from praying. Be like Bartimaeus. Ignore their voices and continue calling out to Jesus. Another way those close to Jesus silence us is by scandal. When we see and hear things done by high-ranking church officials, as well as those who belong to respectable church societies, we feel like giving up on our Christian faith itself. However, by so doing, we cheat ourselves. Imagine if Bartimaeus had kept quiet because of the scandalous attitude of Jesus' followers. Would he get his miracle? No. They said, keep quiet, keep quiet. And we must be careful, we who call ourselves Christians, we who call ourselves followers of Christ, we must be careful. Be careful that you are not trying to shut down people. Be careful that you are not trying to prevent people from coming to Jesus. You remember a few, a few Sundays ago, we, we read this passage of, you know, the children coming to, to, to Jesus. They were bringing children to Jesus after Jesus had answered a question uh, with regards to divorce. You know, Jesus Christ took a stand, a very, you know, a, 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 an, an unconventional stand on divorce. And then they were bringing children to Jesus. And the disciples were trying to stop the children. And Jesus Christ rebuked the disciples. He said, let the children come to me. For to such as this belong the kingdom of God. Child of God. Are you a minister in the house of God? Are you a leader in any church program, in any church society? Are you a, an important person as far as church is concerned, wherever you are? Be careful that you do not discourage the Bartimaeus from coming to Jesus. They are coming to Jesus. They are not coming to you. The, 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 the best you can do is to, is to bring them closer to Jesus. Because you are not the one that will, that, will, that will heal them. It is Jesus that will heal them. So don't be an obstacle to another person from receiving Jesus. And don't be discouraged also. Don't be discouraged by the scandalous attitude of people who, who, who are supposed to be close to Jesus. Don't be discouraged by scandals created by church leaders and those, those, those high-ranking officials in the church. Continue to call out to Jesus. 
continue to call out, Jesus is the one that you are following. All of us are Christians because of Jesus. It is Jesus that gives us that name, Christian. We are not Christian because of this person, because of that person. We are not following Pastor A, Father A, or Bishop A, or, or Pope this. No, we are following Jesus. Do not be discouraged. Lesson number four. Do not allow your possessions to act as obstacles. A few Sundays ago, we read about the rich young man who walked away from Jesus, sad, because he could not let go of his riches and become a disciple of Jesus. In today's gospel passage, we are told that when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was calling him, he sprang to his feet, threw off his cloak, and came to Jesus. The throwing off of his cloak is quite significant here. Could my love for riches be preventing me from deepening my spiritual life? What are those things standing between me and God? What are those things that I need to drop so that I'll become a more prayerful Christian? What are those things that are preventing me from going to church? Throw off that cloak. Throw off that incubarance. Throw off that, that, that love for riches that Jesus Christ described as a thorn that is choking the seed that is planted. Throw off whatever is not allowing you to have time for prayer so that you can come to Jesus. You cannot come to Jesus the way you are. You must drop something. Jesus Christ told us that anyone who wants to be my disciple must first of all deny himself and then take up his cross and come after me. You must be willing to walk the narrow path, not the wide road that leads to destruction. Whatever it is that is preventing you from Jesus, ha, please think about it. Throw it off. Maybe that is the thing that is still keeping you blind. That is still preventing you from you know, seeing, seeing Jesus or preventing you from having faith or preventing you from living a morally upright life. You need to throw it off. You need to throw it off so that you can be a disciple of Jesus. Lesson number five. Prayer is not just a matter of words. When Bartimaeus came to Jesus, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? This is Jesus' attitude when we drop down on our knees to pray. Whenever we come to church or whenever we visit the Blessed Sacrament, after asking that question, Jesus looks into our hearts, he listens to our words, and measures our level of faith. Bartimaeus responded, Master, let me receive my sight. Jesus said, Go, your faith has made you well. It is not enough to tell Jesus our problems. We must do so with faith. Our first reading today assures us that God cares about our well-being. God does not like to see us cry. As Jeremiah says, With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will make them walk by the brook's of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. Jeremiah 31 verse 9. If you must cry in prayer, let not your tears lead to desperation or hopelessness. Believe that God sees and will surely respond. Let your eyes weep, but make sure your heart is firm with faith. In conclusion, faith is like a pair of glasses for the visually impaired. It enables us to see things that our ordinary eyes cannot. Faith is believing things that are not yet. And the reward of faith is seeing what we believe. May God bless his words in our hearts. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you both now and forever. Amen. Happy Sunday.